Welcome to Board Game TV and welcome to our continuing history of comic series with the Spectre, the third series, episode five. And we're going to be taking on the final year of the Spectre. Uh, the final year of the Spectre would have two big storylines that kind of lead back into each other. Um, but first we would get a one-off solo issue, basically. Uh, <clears throat> guest starring Batman and the Joker. And it's basically a Joker breaks out of Arkham Asylum, kills a bunch of people, Spectre's had enough of it, goes to do his justice on the Joker. Batman realizes that he means to kill the Joker, so the Batman's got to stop the Spectre, because, you know, Batman doesn't believe in murder, which, yada yada, it makes no sense. Michael Keaton Batman would have killed him. So it would have been Affleck Batman, but whatever. So uh, the Spectre goes into the Joker's soul, and he realizes that the Joker's wired differently than normal people, and he's not all there, and somehow the Joker gets control of the Spectre power and tries to kill Batman, and hilarity ensues. It's pretty good. Uh, basically, the Spectre ends up getting back control over it, Makes the Joker uh, relive all the harm he's done to everybody, which puts Joker into a drooling coma. Of course, you know, he doesn't stay like that. The Joker always comes back. But I think this was John's final goodbye to the Batman and the Joker, uh, who he'd written before, um, and a unique take on it. Um, it's a one-off issue, but it's pretty good. It's nice to see Spectre interact with other superheroes from time to time and um, very entertaining so next up we get into the haunting of Jim Corrigan storyline now basically because of the effects of the haunting of America storyline Jim is Spectre is very weak because of the having to keep gay alive and getting hit with the spear of destiny so in order to kind of fast track his power coming back or him getting healthy again, basically when Nate Kane sleeps, Jim enters Nate Kane's soul and rests there and it kind of heals him faster. Now this is not really explained why, it's basically said because they have a bond and because Nate had to kind of help Jim during the Hunting American storyline by doing that so Spectre could get some power out of Nate to help Nate, uh, help Spectre recover and be strong enough to face the bad guys in that one. And so, while he's in there, Nate's having these weird dreams, and he, he has this weird dream vision of a young Jim Corrigan who just made detective killing a lady in cold blood named Julia Edmonds. He shoots her in, in the eye or something like that, and she dies. So, uh, Nate keeps having these weird dreams, so he questions the Spectre about it, uh, and Jim's like, it's none of your business, don't worry about it, and, you know, just kind of stay out of it. Well, you know, that's basically right there, <laughs> and Nate's not going to leave it alone. Um, so Nate starts looking into the whole Julia Edmonds case thing uh, from way back when. Jim while he's been recovering, he's kind of been at odds with the Spectre Power. The Spectre Power has kind of been getting out a little bit more out of control, getting more violent. And this kind of started at the end of the Haunting of America storyline. So, uh, one day, kind of, Jim loses control of the Spectre Power, and the Spectre Power goes to the prison in New York. And basically, the Spectre kills everybody in the prison that's guilty of murder or rape. That includes guards, that includes prisoners. I mean, he massacres a lot of people. However, there's this black guy that's on death row for murdering somebody, and the Spectre passes him up and doesn't kill him. So, uh, you realize the guy's innocent. He never, he's, he shouldn't be on death row. He never killed anybody. So his lawyer comes to find out, his lawyer comes to, uh, basically goes to the state and says, you can't execute him. And, you know, the state's like, look, the Spectre doesn't have any authority over here. Uh, just because that happened doesn't mean anything. He was tried 
by jury sentence, he's going to die by execution. Um, the Spectre kind of intervenes on a time when they're going to execute the guy. So they're going to execute the guy and the Spectre shows up and they're like, why are you here? And he's like, I'm telling you this man is innocent. If you kill him, then you're guilty of murder. And if you get to murder, that means I'm going to have to punish you. So they call the governor. The guy gets a last minute uh, rep, uh, respite. However, because they don't recognize the specter's authority or anything, the governor's just commuted the guy's sentence to life in prison. He He's not pardoned. He's just not going to be executed. He's got to spend the rest of his life in prison. Well, the lawyer... And Jim Corrigan, um, Jim starts looking into the case because he feels bad for the guy and wants to find out what happens. So you have that storyline going on, and then you have the whole uh, Nate's looking into the murder of Julia Edmonds storyline. And Nate will let Corrigan come in and sleep so he can gather more information about it. And so you have those two storylines kind of running concurrently. For this first half of the year. Okay, so I'm going to go over the convict story first. So, basically, what happened was, was there were a bunch of corrupt cops that killed a guy, and they framed uh, the prisoner on death row for it. They planted the evidence, framed him, caught him, and uh, he was a petty crook, but he was never guilty of anything big. And so the Spectre finds out, and he goes after the crooked cops, and uh, he finally gets to the ringleader, who's this old retired cop who's spiteful and hateful, and he's in a wheelchair, and he's basically not sorry for what he did. You know, he, he has to live like a poor man after all these years of service while other people got rich and everything, crooks and everything, so he's bitter about it. And before the Spectre can exact justice on him, the guy blows his own brains out. So this enrages the Spectre and sends him into a frenzy. So uh, let's get into the Edmonds thing. So you have Regina Edmonds and Julie Edmonds. So Corrigan is a rookie detective, just promoted. And Regina Edmonds is uh, the mother and Julie is the daughter. And the husband died under mysterious circumstances. So... Regina is the number one suspect. Corrigan sent to investigate. Now, Regina is is an older lady. I guess you would call her a cougar. But she's still pretty good looking. And she kind of seduces Jim. And Jim goes along with it. To prove you how much of a macho man he is, he goes along with it and sleeps with her. But he kind of falls for the daughter, Julia, who's this young, innocent type. And she's more his age. And... She's like warning Jim against her 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 mother, saying her mother's the one who killed her father. Her mother's evil. You better watch out. And so Jim and Julia start a relationship, and basically Jim's sleeping with both of them. But he really likes he likes Julia, and he's starting to fall for her. And and she's you know going along with it. And she she finally says that she, she's so scared of her mother. That her mother's going to kill her, and she wants Jim to take care and kill her mother before her mother does something to her. Well, Jim, Jim's not going to do that. Jim doesn't do that. So, Julia kills her mother, frames Jim for it. Uh, it's basically all about money, getting the inheritance money. Kills Jim for it. And she expects Jim, I mean, uh, frames Jim for him. She expects Jim to go to jail for it. However... The police force is so corrupt, I guess you could say, that they protect Jim. Now, Jim knows he didn't do it, and they kind of know she doesn't do it. He, they know he didn't do it, but the evidence is so much against him, but they protect, protect him, so he doesn't take the fall for it. Julia realizes this and gets real scared, knows that Jim will eventually come for her, so she seduces this, uh, this petty mobster guy and uh, basically gets him to try to kill Jim so they can be together forever. Of course, she has no intention of being with the petty mobster guy, but you know she still seduces him to do it. So the petty mobster guy attacks Jim. He shoots Jim, and but Jim manages to kill the guy. So Jim goes to where the petty mobster guy and Julia were supposed to meet, 
Um, he's, you know, anger and filled with pain and he's hurting because he's still shot. And he, in a fit of rage, I guess, he shoots Julia. I guess, in the, I guess the bullet lands in the eye and she falls off the bridge where he had her at into the river and she supposedly dies. And that's, that's basically the end of it. So, um, Nate Kane actually tracks down Julia. She's still alive somehow. And she kind of changed her name a little bit to kind of hide from Jim. But she changed her life around. She started doing good and, and didn't do any of the bad stuff anymore and all that. And she's kind of been living a, a poor lady's life. She had children. She has a granddaughter named Alex. So Nate uh, finds her and Alex and him kind of start to form a relationship, you could say. He likes her and he he starts to form a bond with her. However, he does ask Julia about what happened and Julia confesses to him. says, look, yes, I did kill my father. I killed my mother. I had that guy. I tried to seduce Jim and all this kind of stuff. So, Nate and Alex know the truth. Now, Alex doesn't know anything about the specter, but Nate does. And Nate realizes that if the specter finds Julia, he's going to kill her. And there's a good chance, since they're sharing bodies sometimes, that he could. So the specter shows up in a fit of rage because of what happened with the corrupt cops. Nate won't let him in to rest. The specter figures out something's wrong, um, discovers that Julia is alive, confronts her, is going to kill her. Nate basically tries to stop him. He can't. Alex asks Nate to uh, shoot her, her grandmother to kind of put her out of her misery. <laughs> Nate starts to, but he can't do it. So Alex shoots her grand, kills her grandmother so the specter can't put her through the ringer. And then the specter tries to kill Alex. But Nate and them are like, look, who are you to judge? And we did, we saved her from you and all this kind of stuff. And the dueling war nature of the Spectre power and Jim kind of make them realize what's going on. And they say, you know what, you're, not, you're right, we're not fit to do this anymore. Let's go seek the judgment of Michael to see what's going on. See uh, if, if we're worthy to do this anymore. So... He goes to the gates of heaven, and the gates and heaven is empty, and nobody's there, and God is gone. And so this starts off the final storyline of the series, The Quest for God. Um, of course, this sends Jim and the Spectre both into a full-blown panic. They're, heaven is empty. There's nothing there. Uh, so they agree to kind of come to a truce to discover what's happened to God, to look for him. And they, they decide the first place they should go look is hell. God's worst enemy is the devil in hell, so they go to look in hell. They go to hell, get in conflict with some demons, but they discover God's not there. He goes over and asks the pantheon gods, you know, like uh, Zeus and all of them. And apparently the demigods like Zeus and Pluto and Poseidon and all them were created by God. And they ask them, they don't know, and all that kind of stuff. So, that's basically that issue. The next issue is a crossover tie-in for Genesis. Genesis was this big crossover DC did. Again, it was not a good crossover. It failed. It wasn't really good. It just had to deal with Dark Side and the source of the new God's power and all that kind of stuff. So, basically, every issue of DC had a tie-in issue with the crossover and the Spectre had a tie-in cro issue crossover with it and he basically goes and sees the source uh, which is kind of like a godlike thing to see if God is there and of course he doesn't find God there or anything like that the next issue deals with aliens of all things there's this alien uh, that lands on earth and it's sends out these pods and it's they take over people and control them and the specter comes into conflict with it 
but this alien is looking for its god so they kind of have a little thing and basically the specter ends up killing the alien and uh, still is no closer to finding God. So then we get to the uh, the end part basically where Spectre um, and Jim look into each other. Um, so the Spectre goes into Jim's past and he sees you know a lot about Jim's dad and how Jim hates his father he's never been able to forgive his father and basically the thing was was his father was having an affair with that uh, black lady and that boy Raffi who was Jim's best friend was actually his father's illegitimate son and once Jim's mother found out um, they had to put he had to make him go away Jim's dad had, even though he's a fire and brimstone preacher, he had a real bloodlust sex problem. And he he just couldn't control himself with his urges. And, of course, later on after he said his urges, he would beat himself, but he couldn't control himself with his urges. Well, the kid, Rafi, ends up drowning, dying after he runs away from being separated from Jim. And Jim never forgave his father for it and everything. And now you finally come to learn the power or what the specter power really is. And the specter power is a fallen angel. It's one of the angels that rebelled with Lucifer and then realized that the rebellion was wrong and sought forgiveness from God. And God made him an aspect of his power to try to atone for his sins. So that's the specter power. And so at the end, they finally come and go back to heaven and they get there, and Michael's there, and Michael's all with a sword, dead with a sword pierced through him. And there's God, this old man, and the specter has a confrontation with him. Where God, you know, if I wanted to right now, I could destroy the world. I destroyed Michael because I just felt like it. I don't like humans, I like dolphins the best, and, and all this kind of stuff. And the, the specter questions him. It's a little weird and off the wall, but... It's basically, he basically makes God out to kind of be this arrogant tool. And basically, the specter is like, uh, um, had enough of it and kind of, he wishes God was dead and he, he thinks he kills God. He, his guy thinks he kills God. Then every, all of a sudden, everything disappears. And the specter's back on Earth, and the specter talks to Father Kramer. Says, "Look, I think I just killed God. I, I just had this conversation with him. I just killed him." And Father Kramer's like, "Well, is the sun still shining? The birds still chirping?" And Jim, they're like, "Yeah." And he's like, "Well, you didn't kill God. I don't know what happened, but I think you killed what you thought was your version of God, because he kept mistaking God." and his father and stuff like that so Jim Corrigan is finally you know what I think I'm done I think it's time for me to go do my final rest so the last issue is basically a funeral for Jim Corrigan um, Father Kramer oversees the funeral if there's no heaven and no God anymore because the specter killed him then what's the point of this uh, Eventually, all kinds of people show up to the funeral. Nate Kane does, which the the lady like Alex is not is not charged with the murder of her grandmother because of the extenuating circumstances with the specter who just killed everybody in the prison. So they understand why she would mercy kill her mother like that. Madame Zandu shows up, and one by one, all these superheroes start showing up that the specter had come into contact over with over the years. The Justice Society. Superman, Batman, um, even though Batman doesn't agree with him. And it's a really touching and, and very satisfying issue. You see all these people pay respects to Jim Corrigan and the Spectre. And so Jim Corrigan uh, dismisses himself from the Spectre power and he goes into heaven and Amy greets him in heaven. 
And that's the end of Jim Corrigan. That's the last you see of him. And the Spectre power goes off into heaven, I guess, waiting for a new host. And it's a very touching and emotional final issue. And I tell you what, it almost brought me to tears. It really did. It was it was very it was done very well. It was very sad, but it was satisfying and happy that Jim finally got peace. And uh, I hated to see it end. Uh, I know he. The book did not get canceled. It was not canceled due to low sales. John just thought that he had told all the stories he wanted to tell. And instead of DC, smartly so, instead of putting a new writer on the book, um, said, you know what, we respect your work too much. Your work's been so great. We'll just go ahead and end the book. And if we start a new Spectre series later, we'll get new writers and stuff. But we're not going to have anybody continue this series because we respect your work too much. And, I, and that, you know, that was a good call. I think that was a good call because so many times a new writer will come in and just screw everything up that, that the comic had established already. And, I, you know, like you take the 90s Ghost Rider uh, as an example. You take many other books as an example. I do disagree with John Doe. I think he could have went to issue 100. I think he did have plenty more story to tell, especially the thing with Corrigan's relatives who cursed him way back in the early issues. And there were a few more things I think he could have done. But, you know, it was his decision. He wrote the book. He put his heart and soul into it. And it was a fantastic book. Um, and a real, and it ended really good. It was a good satisfying end. It was a sad one. I, like I said, I almost teared up. And at the end, Madame Exandu, she kind of tears up because she realizes that Corrigan is not at peace and that's something she'll never have because she cheated death at cards and she will never be able to die and she's stuck here and she's kind of sad about it and envious a little bit about it now too and Nate and Alex seem to have a good relationship and go on and Father Kramer is now uh, head of a different church and is happier and wiser to have known Jim Corrigan and <clears throat> And a lot of heroes reflect on it. And it was it was good. It was a good issue. A lot of heroes were saddened by it. Um, you know, some of them just came by to pay their respects. And so it was a fitting end to a great series. Now, there would be a fourth series of the Spectre. It would come along a couple years later, but it would not be Jim Corrigan. Hal Jordan. They still had to find a way to bring Hal Jordan back because he was dead. And they didn't want to cheap resurrect him. So the Spectre series would come back under new writers, new art team, and Hal Jordan would be the Spectre. He would become this. He would hold the Spectre power, and I think the the book lasted a couple years, but it was not meant to last long. The ultimate goal is to get Hal Jordan back to being Green Lantern. Okay, so that Spectre book with Hal Jordan, which it wasn't bad, um, where he was the Spectre, was meant for somehow Hal Jordan to come back to life and become the Green Lantern again. And that's what it did. Hal Jordan would end up becoming a live human again, somehow, some way, and become the Green Lantern. And then from time to time afterwards, DC would use the Spectre, but they would never really get him right um, afterwards. And kind of, I think, I think they even had somebody else become the Spectre after that. And so, you know, it, it, it just, uh, it wasn't, to me, it wasn't, it wasn't good. I honestly, though, I, I really never did give it a chance. I gave the Hal Jordan series a chance, but I knew what it was, was just a stepping stone to how become a Green Lantern. I just didn't want to give anything else a chance because I just, John did such a great job with the Spectre on this run, and it was just such a fantastic book. I couldn't see the character being written by anybody else or any other way it just to me he had sole ownership of it and if he's not doing it then forget about it I tried to give it a chance when they did the whole magic thing um, they did some kind of big magic thing around the time of the new 52 and, and all that kind of stuff when DC was revamping their whole their whole universe uh, but yeah it just like I said it wasn't the same um, as you can tell, I love uh, this series. 
it was one of my favorites of the 90s um, I wanted it to go on but it didn't and uh, it ended prematurely in my mind um, <clears throat> I think John did a fantastic job Tom did a fantastic job um, this series is was critically acclaimed and it was one of the best series of the 90s although it tends to get forgotten because there were so many good series of the 90s and the Spectre is an off the beat character and it, it does tend to get forgotten um, if you're sick of comic books today if you were a comic book fan in the 90s and you missed this for whatever reason and you love comics of the 90s you can get these back issues pretty cheap um, start getting them six at a time whatever and you'll enjoy it it's a great series and it's a it's a time capsule back into the 90s seeing all the ads and stuff in the book for stuff that came out in the 90s and PlayStation 1 ads and Super Nintendo ads fantastic if you're new to comic books but the comic books of the day make you want to puke um, and you treasure some good stuff from the past then here you go you have 63 issues in one annual it's not expensive go back and get these back issues and see what a real character arc story driven book is about and you won't regret it the Spectre third series highly recommend it one of my favorites and one of DC's best risk taking efforts of the 90's so I hope to see you next time for a new series until then, have fun.